Good Tuesday to you. We've got uh, a nice day today, foggy, deeper marine layer, mild day again today. After those very warm to hot days, Friday, Saturday, we had that big cool down Sunday. Yesterday followed suit, and today, a little warmer, a little cool. It depends where you are. The coastal sections will have plenty of fog. The marine layer is completely deepened out. It's This is Mount Tam. This is a live picture from this morning. Uh, let me see if I can pull up. Here we go. We'll go live picture. We'll loop it. This is the marine layer earlier this morning. And you can kind of see it's going to take a minute to load. But you can kind of see how deep it got. It got up to the camera, indicating, you know, up over 2,000 feet deep. And so that pushes in over the coastal hills, which average about 1,000 feet deep. That just, if you average, you know, Montero Mountain up to the Bolinas Ridge area. Um, and so with that, you've got a lot of fog and low cloud pushing inland. And so this is the pattern. This is the profiler, if you will. Remember yesterday how deep the marine layer got? Actually kind of mixed out. This is last night, yesterday at this time. And then you see temperature, or the marine layer start to pinch down. It actually starts to reestablish itself because it kind of goes away here. You just kind of get mixed out. Pro, this is a profile of the fog bank. And then you can kind of see, okay, the marine layer just sort of non-existent, but we're right there. And there we are right now, or this morning at Fort Ord, probably about 2,500 feet, which is kind of what we just saw at Mount Tamalpaya. So this is the story, really, this whole week. So again, cross-section of the fog, how deep and how shallow, how deep it gets, like it's deep now, you're, gonna, you're not going to have heat inland either and then when you get shallow you're going to have more heat depending on how shallow it gets so we're going to do this the next hmm, week we're going to go deeper marine layer shallower marine layer right now it's deeper but it's going to go a little shallower and just a few few hundred feet makes a lot of difference in terms of temperature inland so these are subtle variations that are going to continue right through the week for the most part here is the fog and low cloud this is a satellite loop showing the visible and what do we see well we can see that trough kind of pushing the fog away from the coast you can see that big push of inland fog right that's that deeper marine layer right it's a nicasio it doesn't have much the nicasio is pretty low it's a gap but you've got look how far inland that was especially in the north bay so big push is that marine layer and the inversion deepened out look at salinas valley all the way up into the Salinas, well into the Salinas Valley, almost into the Central Valley. So the cooling influences from this fog, you don't see the fog inland, but it's there. The cool air gets in there and modifies places like Sacramento, even as far north as Redding, eh, maybe not Redding so much, but certainly Marysville, and, and even probably as far north as Orland. Uh, this is, what else we got? We got some wraparound moisture here coming from a weather system to the south. And maybe it'll squeeze out a little something. You can see by the texture in these clouds that there might be a little bit of vertical development, but nothing extreme. You can see the green, and you can see the brown in the Great Basin. And we are heading for another day today, a lot like tomorrow. I think it'll be just a little warmer in some of the inland spots, but like Reading today goes 99. They're not feeling the impacts of the cooling as much as Sacramento. Look at Sacramento today, 89, 90 degrees. It's not that. For Sacramento in June, it's, it's, it's nice, pleasant, probably about where it should be, but not real hot. So we're going to see temperatures inland staying mild to very warm to even hot for the next few days. And then areas right along the coast are going to do what they do. So it is. this is what I would call kind of a classic summer weather pattern. The only thing that's different is it's kind of usually you'll get a ridge that'll build in pretty substantially and just stay put this pattern and you'll see this this pattern doesn't really build a ridge in so there's a loop around us there's the low we just highlighted with that wraparound moisture and then see all this stuff coming down all, in, all that scud if you will that's in through thursday afternoon into friday it just keeps coming so for it to get warm see the little clock counterclockwise flow down there, right there, that orange area, that just keeps us in a deeper marine layer. And it moves a little, it shallows, it deepens, it shallows. As this low gets closer, I'll just back up. See that, that red and yellow over us? As that does that, the marine layer is going to deepen. As it moves on, the marine layer is going to shallow and it's going to warm. So perturbations, subtle, 
And then this is interesting here, and that guy. That's on June 12th. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if that goes down and then back into June 14th. So sort of an interesting pattern. Uh, will that happen? I'm not, I don't think so. I think something like that will happen. Uh, there'll be inversions and in expanding and, and decreasing. And I think the jet stream will be further closer to us. But I'm not, to have that much activity this time of year would be kind of unusual, but we'll see. Anyway, needless to say, tomorrow, a lot like today, which will be a lot like the next day and the next day and the next day, something will break and get established itself here soon. So in the meantime, these are the forecast highs for, this is for today, right here. You see the heat in the Inland Bay Valleys. It's got it up into the 90s. And if you look along the coast, you'll see, you know, Bay, Coast, this little notch area here, and as well as down towards San Diego, Southern California, there's just cooling because the marine layer is going to be a constant player, even if it doesn't show up in the form of fog. So here we go again into Tuesday after, or when, Wednesday afternoon, right here. And you can see again, purples in the far inland Bay Valleys, eastern Sacramento, San Joaquin Valley, but then the cooler, milder temperatures along the coast. And this just keeps going day after day, right? So you see very subtle. And I guess the thing that I keep seeing that you keep seeing here is this low. This is a this is surface stuff. So, but a surface low, so that the flow. So that surface low kind of hangs, and that's enough to really keep the marine layer kind of just getting fat, getting skinny, getting fat. And this is getting fat when you get this low in here like this. So, hmm, be interesting to see. Either way, if you have outdoor plans, you're pouring concrete or you're doing paint or you're doing something like that, you're going to be fine. Uh, the uh, surf along the coast is, it kind of peaked yesterday and it kind of drops down the next few days. We'll look at that in a minute. This is Mount Whitney, uh, 14,505 feet. And it's not, it's the tallest mountain in the contiguous United States, but McKinley up in Denali is much taller. McKinley is in Craig, Alaska, Denali, um, 20,310 feet. Right, right. I knew it was tall, but that's tall, man. That's getting up there. Um, and it's just a beautiful day down there. And you can see the color starting to change. You see some of that cloud cover that we actually picked up on the satellite earlier, that wraparound moisture from that low. Um, we can also take a peek at Mount Shasta, which is 14,179, which is, you'd think it'd be, is, it just looks taller because it sits alone, but beautiful day and lots of snow on the peak. A lot of snow. Awesome. And so with that in mind, we will expect skiing to continue at Mammoth. Mammoth is going to do this move where they don't stop skiing. Like they, we don't want to get on these guys. Mammoth opens at 7.30 in the morning, closes at 1 because it probably gets too soft in the afternoon. But I was looking for a close date on these guys and they don't do it. They just go as long as they can go. It looks like they don't have much longer. And then they turns kind of into a mountain bike park up there and everything. But we'll keep an eye on Mammoth and see how they're doing and how long it takes them to, uh, or how long they hang on with snow. It looks like they're going to be going for a little while. If we sit here a minute, this camera's going to move. Um, I don't much feel like skiing this time of year just because it gets so warm. I mean, at this point, it's like you're fishing or mountain biking or, or, some, or surfing or something like that. But eh, it's kind of fun. And if you're a diehard skier, and the best thing about skiing, truthfully, is being up on the mountain. That's why I used to like most. When you really think about it, you're in this chairlift. It takes you to the top of a mountain in the middle of winter, which you would never get to do normally and see those views. I mean, you could hike up there. Um, that lift looks like it's closed, but Mammoth, still waiting to close. This is a place called, um, eh, it's south of Santa Cruz a little bit, but, but I wanted to point out, first of all, yeah, it's crowded. School's out, right? Um, swells, three to four, three to five. But one of the things I want you to notice is see how the waves are all pushing together. This is inside the cove. See how it's all just, uh, this is that wind that we talked about from the last two days is showing up and just see how it jumbles the surf and how close together the waves are. They're the sets. The waves are only a few seconds apart, so it's all squished together. Um, is the surf, uh, is there a surf? Yeah. Is it kind of jumbly and junky? Yeah, kind of is. And that's what happens when you get big offshore winds. Uh, we can look at the Eagles. Oh, Gizmo, I believe. Sunny flew yesterday. To be honest with you, I had a little tear in my eye. I felt bad for Gizmo. They're both girls, which I didn't know. 
I do now. I guess I learned that a couple of days ago. But he's or she is feeling this pressure, like she's got to fly now. And it's interesting to watch. Like their demeanor has changed so much, obviously, since they were little. But um, I think Gizmo or Sunny has returned to the nest a little bit. But the flooding, the the um, this stage where they're kind of getting ready to fly before they fledge, I guess, actually fly. They, they yeah, somebody, somebody's practicing. Not a, not a, not a girl. Yeah, awesome. I, just getting ready, man. Just get your comments. Remember this, I think uh, she was four days younger than her sister. So she is just maybe, you know, a couple of days behind. That's a, that's a long time when you're only, you know, three months old. So anyway, I was just thinking about, I was watching her getting ready to, fly as we just both all were but she does a thing where she um it reminds me when i was a kid i used to go up to the sabla up to the rocks up in uh up on the butte creek way up high above the de sabla um powerhouse and there was this big old rock we used to jump off of which was super dangerous which is kind of like what she's getting ready to do she's gonna jump off something and so i was scared to do it but it was sort of a power move right in high school paradise high school 1977 so and i was scared quite frankly, but I knew if I could do it, I would garner the attention of certain young females that would be down in the hole below. It was just, it was a power move. You'd come in, you'd hike down the trail, and then you guys, if you were there, you remember, and then you'd, you'd just, you wouldn't even talk to anybody, you just rip them off and you just fly. And this rock was high, man. I mean, it's solid 60 foot. I think we did the physics on it because we measured the velocity and then the, we were able to determine the height from, how do we determine the height? I can't remember how we did it. We used some physics for anyway. We figured it was around sixty feet, which is it. It's not death-defying high, but it's really high when you're jumping into this little hole. But anyway, as I watch um, Gizmo, it reminds me of when I would do a move where I would I would go up there alone. This is so me. I would go up there alone and I would go climb the rocks on the outside and I would get a quarter way up and I jump. And then I get halfway up and then I jump. I get a little about two feet above halfway and jump because you could climb up these rocks. It wasn't safe, but I didn't care. I wanted to be able to jump off this upper rock. So I just kept practicing at not being scared. And eventually, you know, I did it. And I, you know, it was awesome. But uh, I just, I want to think about, I know, personal story, but when I think about gizmo i think that's what it is it's like you just get the wings out you kind of step towards the edge oh almost oh no and at some point it'll just come naturally but i have heard from some of the chat online about these two that it's normal it could take weeks it probably won't based on what we're seeing here but it could take weeks before she she goes but it's interesting too the sort of the bernoulli's effect when she pulls her wings out and i saw this a lot with um sunny too but you get Bernoulli, the Bernoulli equation is basically how airplane, it, it, it describes how air flows over a surface and it creates lift. Um, it creates, you know, it's like airplane wings, how they're curved. Well, so when she pulls her wings out and the air is blowing the right way, they actually, and I saw Sunny do this, will actually just lift up off the ground and then come down. So they're flying essentially, but they're still over the branches. And I think, I think she's probably already done that. All right. So Mammoth, not closed yet. Probably talk to Kurt Myers tomorrow. I'm hoping. I'm trying to figure out my, my setup. I'm going to talk to him. Oh, she looked like she flew, but I think she just flew to the other side of the nest. Let's see. We got to, we got to hang out on this. But I'll probably talk to Kurt Myers tomorrow. He's the young man who got pinched by a shark at Montera. And I guess there was a whale offshore that was dead. So I'm going to ask him about that because I've gone in the ocean a bunch. And I got, I, I got to see if she flew. This camera, this camera, oh, no, she just flew to the other side of the nest. That's like me, right? Halfway climbing up the rock, jumping in a little bit. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Um, I will see you back here. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. I hope we'll talk to Kurt. Uh, I'll have to do it through some kind of a Google Meet thing, and I'll edit it in. But I, he's gonna be, it's going to be interesting because I know, I know a lot of guys who've been bit by sharks. A lot of guys who've been bit by sharks. Like one, Kurt, Rob, two, Russ, three. Tim, four. I know four guys who've been bit by white sharks, who have been attacked. And I personally have been one, two, I've had two pretty good encounters. And th a third, I saw a shark of, on the bluffs above Mirror Beach attack a seal. 
So yeah, you get old enough, you see it all. Okay, flap your wings. I'll see you back here tomorrow.